And so it's just good. It's just good what the Lord's doing. Um, the other thing is uh, our missionaries we pray for. And um, we want to continue to pray, but if God stirs your heart, you want to support one of the missionaries, I, you know, normal, we, they never say anything about money. But if you do, just take your check and put a little memo or your envelope, say, hey, could you add a few dollars to their account? We'll make sure it gets directly to them. We don't take any, any money or so anything for Agape Chapel. We'll go straight to a mission work. Uh, this Sunday, this weekend, we'll be putting in your bulletin, Calvary Chapel Magazine, so you can see what other God's work that God's doing around the world. We think that's important, so we continue to pray for the mission work that's going on. Our mission work, I believe, starts right here, right outside the door where we're at. I mean, you don't have to go very far before you see people that need Jesus, right? And so uh, from our streets here in Santa Ana, Costa Mesa, wherever you might be, to your workplace, there's always a place to share to Jesus, Jesus Christ with somebody. As I was hearing all three of them share here tonight, one of the things they had, they had in common was the same thing Jesus had. They were all moved with compassion. Did you guys feel that? Love, love what changes the world. Love is what, um, what really makes a difference. And so, but me, what I'm doing tonight, I'm gonna, since it is mission night, we never know how long it's gonna go and we don't wanna slow it down and all that because the Lord's moving. We're gonna hold off our James study. So if you could turn with your, your Bible over to Psalm 71. I thought we'd look at a Psalm here tonight and then you guys can figure out wisdom next week. If you don't have wisdom this week, just ask God and he'll give it to you. I'm gonna give you a real quick Bible study that way, right? He, he, he loves you and he'll take care of you. Psalm 71 is such a beautiful psalm. God, the rock of our salvation. God is solid. Somebody that we can count on in a, such a, you know, just a crazy, crazy world. I, you think that our people in Washington would get it figured out. Talk, they're not a rock. They're just shifting, shifting sand, aren't they? Day in and day out. It says, in you, Lord, I put my trust let me uh, never be put ashamed. So the question is, do we put our trust in God? And he says, and you, oh Lord, you, oh you Jehovah, are you Yahweh? That's who I put my trust in, the God who created heaven and earth. And it really does make a difference when we know the person that we're putting our trust in, that we realize how much he cares for us and, and the might that he gives us. And I, and I thank God he never has put, let us to be, put us to shame. He says, deliver me in your righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline your ear to me and save me. And I love the psalmist because sometimes you, feel, you ever feel like, God, are you really listening? And the idea, climb your ear to him. Remember that old uh, commercial that they had e when E.F. Hutton, I think, was speak, everything gets quiet. I, you know, when his kids speak, God gets quiet. He listens. There's not a word that he doesn't hear of yours. There's not a prayer he's ever, that you've ever asked that he doesn't listen. And I think it's important for us to know is that during our time of trouble, we can fall, find God. Be my strong refuge, in verse 3, to which I may resort continuously. Uh, you have given the commandments to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Of course, the military for, that we're seeing here, a place of protection, a place where you can hide out. You know, when you, you go over to Israel and you go down south, you go up to the uh, rock city. I mean, you go up to, uh, oh boy, the pet. Pet, pet, not Petra, but where all you go up the top of the rock, where where the military Masada up there, and when you go up to Masada, one of the things that you see that's carved out on the path on the way up there is are these somewhat caves or places you can hang out and be. And when I've been up over there before, some some knucklehead challenged me to run up there to go with him. His name was Chuck Smith Jr. <laughs> And he was been a runner. He always was a runner. And I said, Ah, let's go. And a couple of us guys took off running. Well, it didn't take very long before we. I he was way up there, and I was way back. And and so another brother of mine was probably probably about the same shape as I was. We got about halfway up or three fourths of the way out, and there was one of those cutouts because it was hot. Sun was baking on us on those switchbacks, and we put our arm in arm. How the Lord hides us in the cleft of His rock. 
how God takes care of us. And this is what this psalmist says, saying, Lord, you protect me. Did you notice he says, to which I may resort continually? It's just now once in a while, you never wake up, wear out your welcome with God. You can go there as many times as you need it. He wants you to come. And he goes, deliver me, O God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. And so now he's making his petition to God. We don't know who these cruel guys are. We don't know the situation that's going on. You know, this could be David. I'm sure it is David. Maybe speaking about when he was being chased down and, you know, hunted and everybody, everything else. He was asking God. And it's so important that we make our petitions before the Lord. That we talk to him, you know, you know, almost like friend to friend. Because he doesn't call a servant anymore. He calls us our, our, our friend and he says, come and ask of me. And we'll be talking more about how important we just need to ask God next week as we look into James. He says, for you are my hope, O Lord, my uh, Lord God. You are my trust from my youth. And I, don't you love that? He knew the Lord from, you know, David as he was out watching those sheep. As he was there, he knew the Lord from his youth. And I think that so, speaks so much volume for us as is not only as parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and all that, that we teach the kids about the Lord. They might sway for a bit, but they'll come running home back to the Lord. If you, if you had no one, some that have swayed, keep praying for them that they would come running back home because the word of God never, ever comes back void. It's still working in their heart and we need to pray. But here he's saying, he says, for you are my hope. And, and that's so important. What do we put our hope in? What are you putting your hope in tonight? I can't think of anything, anything more sure than the God that we serve and the words that he spoke, that tonight I can rely upon the word of God. And he says, for by you I have been upheld from birth. You are he who took me out of the mother's womb and my praise shall, continue, uh, shall be continually of you. And I, this picture of, uh, of he recognized, looking back how God's hand was upon him his entire Life. I, I think all of us could probably look at that and see that. How God has taken care of us. How many times, well, just even this last week, I don't know what the deal is. It seems like it's a wild frontier with the car drivers nowadays. I was in the left-hand lane going to make a left-hand turn, but this guy way over the right-hand lane decided to turn left right in front of me. I go, uh, 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 you know, I go, but I survived. I lived because God's hand was upon me. He does. How many times has, does he protect you day in and day out? In verse 7, I have become as a, a, a wonder to many, but you are my strong refuge. Again, his place of safety. And allow, if you're feeling out of sorts at all, go running home to your place of safety. Go find yourself in the, the everlasting arms of our Father. Let my mouth be filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. <clears throat> so continuously, he's talking about giving thanks. There's trouble all around him. The best we can tell in this situation, he says, but God, you've been faithful since my, I've been a kid. You've never let me down. You've never forsaken me. And let me continue to give you praise and, and, and with your glory all the day long. Verse 9. Do not cast me off in the times of, of old age. Do not, do not forsake me when my strength fails. And, you know, that's kind of, I think, very easy to think that. Unfortunately, a lot of times when old age comes, people around us stop caring about the older people. And they start feeling very much alone. For many, many years, we started a ministry over at Pastor Chuck. Uh, had to start a, a convalescent ministry, and we had many people come to be a part of it. I forgot what we, we gave it a name back then. I forgot what we called it. And we trained them up on how to teach the Bible, and we sent them out. And there's this great brother that was in the military. He was some type of general or something. And, but now he wanted to learn. He just wanted to go out and share 
And so he had all these convalescent homes that he wouldn't go. He would go through every week, you know, 10, 12 of them, I think it were. And he would teach the word of God and just love on people. And I would talk to him. And I don't know why my, my brain's not quite clicking tonight. You guys might know him, but I can't think of his name right now. You know, and, and I asked him, I go, what do you, why do you do this? He says, just like you would. It's a door a lot of times nobody ever comes out of. It's a door where a lot of times family members will take you there, drop you off, and they'll be there for Mother's Day and Christmas and Easter, but they're no longer there. And that's the feeling. He says, don't cast me out when I get old. Lord, I need a friend. And no matter what's going on, if everybody's forsake you, our best friend will never, ever leave you alone. The Lord is there. He says, do not forsake me when my strength fails. For my enemies speak against me, and those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together. Otherwise, again, they're plotting together to do him harm, saying, God has forsaken him. Pursue and take him, for there is none to deliver him. Boy, how, what a wrong statement they are saying, aren't they? Say, God has forsaken them. God has never, ever forsaken any of his children. He'll never forsake you. But the enemy would want us to believe that. He would, the enemy would want to come against us and say, God doesn't care about you anymore. In verse 12, oh God, do not be far from me. Oh my God, make haste to help me. Let them be confounded and consumed who are our adversaries of my life and let them be covered with reproach and dishonor who seek my hope, I mean my hurt. He's asking God to fight his battles. That's, again, a good place to be in. Put the Lord in between you and your troubles. It's really another way to look at it. Don't fight the battles yourself. Call upon the Lord. And we'll be, again, next week we'll be talking about it. A lot of times we get in a, a flame, a, 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 really a boiling up type of situation. We don't know what to do. Take a pause and ask God to help you like this brother is doing. He's asking, David's asking God for help and Ask God to show you, give you that wisdom you, you're in. And so a lot of times I think when I get into trouble, it's because I don't take time to pray and I don't stop and wait upon the Lord to speak to me. In verse 14, but, but I will hope continually and I will praise you yet the more and more. Uh-oh, here again, a, a theme we're hearing over and over. Paul kind of picks this up in Philippians, doesn't he? Chapter, I think, or First Thessalonians. Rejoice in the Lord when? We're always, and again I say rejoice. That's not a new, a lot of times people like to say, well, that's just a New T Testament doctrine. No, no, no. Here we find the psalmist saying, I, even in my problems, I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. And then he goes, my mouth shall tell of your righteousness and your salvation all the day, for I do not know their limits. I notice your, your salvation, I don't know your limits. Otherwise, God has ways to help us beyond what we could ever imagine. You know, he says, I don't know all the resources that God might have to be able to help me in a situation. Give God an opportunity to work. Don't box him in. He says, I don't know all your resources. I don't know their limits. I will go in the strength of the Lord God, and I will make mention of your righteousness of, of yours only. And, and oh God, you have taught me from my youth, and to this day I declare your wondrous work. And, and here's the picture of this beautiful man. He says, I'm going to make a purpose of my life to go forth in your strength. One of the things I think so often we, we miss in people's life is how they kind of waffle in their commitment. They're not men and women of purpose. We see that this Psalmist David was a man of purpose. He says, I'm going to do this. I'm going to walk in your ways. I'm not, I'm not going to be moved away from him. He says in verse 18, No, also when I'm old and gray-haired, oh God, do not forsake me until I've declared your strength to, to this generation. He says, even when I'm, I get gray hair, don't let me stop ta telling people about Jesus. Long as they're, hey, John, are you going to quit or are you going to keep going? 
until you die. You know, I think we could say it out of all, all of us in here. You wouldn't be out on a Thursday night if you just say, I want to serve God. And that's what he said, Lord, give me the strength so I can continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Right now, I think you guys heard me talk about Agape Chapel's put together a phone app, you know, that has our different Bible studies that have a lot of the radio program. I, you know, you say, well, well I have some own, my own reasons to do it. One of them is that I like to reach my family members. And I'm hoping that they'll listen to their crazy brother or, you know, or, or some relatives would listen to that and maybe be encouraged in the word and maybe come to know the Lord or maybe somebody has heard of Agape Chapel. They'll click it on and they'll be able to hear about Jesus Christ. That's why we want to use every means and efforts, a way that we can do to reach people for the Lord. And that's why... Judy, we pray for you every week. We pray for what, you know, and there are missionaries, and we're going to continue now. Well, we got to pray for those kids down south, and obviously Operation Christmas Child. And I don't know if you quite got it. John was trying to tell us is that we could do this year-round. We can be involved in it. In fact, you know, John, I, I hope we have more faith than just 50 boxes next year. That was a good start, but maybe God will let us move up. Maybe, right now, my fifth faith is swallowed up to 60 boxes. Maybe you guys can encourage me, dear, to you. 200, okay. <laughs> but we, we, that's how it works. We spark each other on the good works. We encourage each other. Verse 19, also your righteousness, O God, is very high, and you have done great things, O God. Who is, is like you? Again, a theme over and over we hear is there anybody like our God? There isn't anybody. Our great football teams, we're going to have two great ones play Sunday. Five years from now, we're probably not going to remember what those great teams were, right? But today, they're all our superheroes. Oh, our God never changes. He's constant. He put the universe into being. He got the stars up. He's got everything going. And he says, you have shown me great and severe tr troubles. You shall revive me again and bring me up again from the depths of the earth. You shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. And with the lute, I will praise you. And, and with your faithfulness, uh, oh, my God, to you, I will sing with a harp. O Holy One of Israel. And again, the instruments, the lute, we don't really know what it is. Uh, maybe he had a trombone section, we don't know. But he was wanting to sing and he was wanting to praise. He was wanting to give thanks. And I believe that it's in the heart of all of us believers. I mentioned before, I think there's a band going off in my heart all the time. I just got to listen to it. It's a band of rejoicing. It's a band that wants to sing forth and, and play that lute if I ever could find one, you know. And it's so wonderful to see him doing this. Verse 23, my lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing to you in my soul, which you have redeemed. And so now he's bringing it in the full circle. The reason why he's able to sing, the reason why he's able to praise is because his life has been redeemed. Don't we have a lot to give thanks for? Our life's on a path of destruction, and Jesus entered in. And finally, in verse 24, my tongue also shall talk of your righteousness all the day long, for they, they come confounded, and for they are, are brought to shame who seek my hurt. So he brings it back. He says, God's going to teach. You know, the problem's still there. The problem's still around him. Well, boy, when you get God in the middle of your problem, it doesn't seem such a big deal, does it? So I was listening to everybody speak tonight and being blessed like all of us and sitting back there and go, Lord, what would you have me to do? And I go, oh, I think I'm going to do Psalm 69. And I said, nope, oh, Psalm 70. Oh, 71, okay, Lord, let's go do it. You know, and I'm glad we did. Is we got to talk about the greatness of our God. And he doesn't vacate. He doesn't leave you. And he's going to get on a plane or he'll go before Judy when she goes. When you, how many more weeks do we have you, Judy? The 15th? Okay, we get to see her a little bit more. 
But that's what we get to do is we get to pray for each other, help each other uh, this week. If you think of each other, you think of Agape Chapel this week, please pray. Pray for us that God will continue to lead us and guide us. My whole purpose and desire is to be that we as Agape Chapel will be led by God's Holy Spirit. That we'll be led by him, reaching people, strengthening them, and just loving on people. Doesn't matter if it's two or 2,000. Our goal is the same, is to love people. I was with the church one time where Time Magazine or Look, or Look said, that, eh, the church says 25,000. Of course, we were all involved with it back in the 70s or 80s. It's that same feeling that I experienced when I was 17, 18 years old that I feel tonight. I'm still in love with Jesus, and I still love the people of God. That doesn't change. And that's what the David was saying in this psalm. He says, Lord, from my youth to right now, to when I get old, you're gonna, never going to leave me. You're never going to forsake me. And I got that rock to stand on. Why don't we go to the Lord in prayer? Father, we do thank you this evening. We thank you for what you did. Lord, we just gave you this night whatever you wanted to do. I remember me said, I praying on the way in, Lord, that we'd be led of you. And, and Lord, you said, James is good for next week. Because there's ministry that needed to happen tonight. And I pray that we were all stirred on by the stories that we heard. That we'll take those with us and we'll continue to pray. Lord, those little kid, that little boy that had to walk some, I think she said four miles or so. Yes, Lord, I just pray that you would touch not only him, but all the other little kids that are melted. I mean, they don't get enough food to eat, Lord. Father, where you would shepherd them and you would watch over them and you might provide for them. Lord, thank you that we were going able to go with Judy down to South Korea and see all the good things that you're doing and pray you continue to provide and that you'd make a way, that you'd bless her teaching, her one-on-one -on -one ministry, her, her example that she is to so many, Lord, that you might go before her. And Lord, the, the wonderful opportunity that we get to come alongside a Samaritan's Purse and Franklin Graham and Operation Christmas Child, I, I pray that this year might be the best year, Lord, until you come back. That I, I believe that there's one more box that needs to be handed out. There's one more child that needs to know you, Lord. And Lord, I just pray for that right now. Lord, it seems like our world, our nation, doesn't care about the children the way we should. And I just pray that we might turn our eyes onto our kids and, and look to reach out to them in love. So I just pray you continue to bless that work, keep a, a hedge of protection about, about the ministry there, as we ask that you would keep a hedge of protection about Agape Chapel and the things that you're doing here. We want to give you our praise and thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't we all stand? To lay aside his crown I'm in awe